Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel where we make programming accessible and fun for beginners. If you're just starting out with Python or looking to expand your skills, you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to work on a project that's both engaging and educational. We'll be building a multiple choice quiz game using Python's Tinter library. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully functioning quiz game that tests your knowledge while solidifying your understanding of Python and GUI programming. This tutorial is perfect for beginners who want to get hands-on experience with Python. Let's dive in and start coding. So, what exactly are we building today? Our quiz game will ask you a series of general knowledge questions. For each question, you'll see five different answer choices, and your job is to pick the correct one by clicking the corresponding button. Simple, right? We'll go through the code step by step, so even if some parts seem tricky at first, don't worry. By the end of this video, everything will make sense. Let's get started with the code. We'll take this line by line to ensure you understand exactly how each part works. Let's start with the basics. First, we import the Tinter library. This is Python's standard toolkit for creating graphical user interfaces, GUIs. By importing Tinter, we gain access to all the tools we need to build our quiz game, from windows to buttons and labels. Here, we're using two imports. Tkinter as TK gives us a shorthand way to reference Tkinter throughout our code, and from Tkinter import message box allows us to easily create pop-up messages. Message boxes are what we'll use to display the final score at the end of the quiz. Next, we define our quiz data. This is a list of dictionaries, where each dictionary contains one question, a list of possible answers, and the correct answer. This structure keeps everything organized and makes it easy to loop through the questions later on. Each entry in this list represents a single question. The question key holds the text of the question itself, the choices key contains a list of possible answers, and the answer key stores the correct answer. This makes it easy for us to reference and compare later. Moving on, we define the check answer function. This function is crucial because it's responsible for checking whether the player's selected answer is correct. If it is, we increment the score. Here, we pass the selected choice. That's the answer the player clicked on to the function. We then compare this choice to the correct answer stored in our quiz data. If they match, we increase the score by one. Next, we advance to the next question. If there are more questions left, we update the display. If not, we show the final score. This code checks if there are more questions to be asked by comparing the current question index with the total number of questions. If there are more, we call the update question function to update the quiz display. If not, we call show final score to display the final result. Now, let's look at the update question function. This function updates the question text and the possible answers on the screen each time the player moves to a new question. Here, questionlabel.config updates the question text, while buttons i.config updates the text on each button to display the new answer choices. The command parameter ensures that clicking a button triggers the check answer function with the correct choice. Finally, let's take a look at the show final score function. This is what displays the player's score at the end of the quiz. This function creates a message box that shows how many questions the player got right out of the total number of questions. Then, it exits the game by calling root to quit. To put it all together, we set up the Tkinter window and call these functions to start the quiz. Here's the part of the code that initializes the window and kicks off the quiz game. We create the main window using tk.tk 
and give it a title with root title. The current question and score variables keep track of which question the player is on and how many correct answers they've given. We create the question label to display the question text and use a loop to create five buttons for the answer choices. The update question function is called to display the first question and answers and root. Main loop starts the tinter event loop, which keeps the window open until the player closes it. And that's the full breakdown of our quiz game code. If you'd like to take a closer look or experiment with it yourself, I've uploaded the complete code to my GitHub repository. You can find the link in the description below. And that's the full breakdown of our quiz game code. Now that we've gone through the code, let's see our quiz game in action. I'm going to play through it and show you how everything works together. Here's the first question. What is the capital of France? The possible answers are displayed as buttons, and I'll go ahead and click on Paris, since that's the correct answer. As you can see, the next question appears immediately, and the answer choices are updated. This continues until all the questions have been answered. And now, for the moment of truth, let's see our final score. Great! The game calculates our score and displays it in a message box. You can easily expand this project by adding more questions, changing the topics, or even introducing different types of questions, like true slash false or short answer. I hope you enjoyed building this quiz game with me today. It's a fantastic project for beginners because it covers so many fundamental Python concepts while being a lot of fun to create and play. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow coding enthusiasts. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on new tutorials and coding tips. We have plenty of exciting projects lined up that will take your programming skills to the next level. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding, stay curious, and have fun with Python. Bye for now.